Brynn has been out for some time and she has widely been accepted as being a very strong support. What is less known, however, is just how she changes pretty much everything from how you want to build your characters and teams, adjust your artifact sets, your artifact stats, and sometimes even your weapons to accommodate for her kit. And so in today's video, we're going to be talking about how much Freena actually changes and cover what you should be doing differently when it comes down to building your teams and also building your individual characters that will be ran alongside Farina. On top of that, I want to cover sort of how she changes the meta as a whole, as well as other aspects of her kit. Before we begin, I want you guys to know that I do stream most nights on Twitch. Link in the description if you're interested. And with that being said, let's talk about Farina. To start with this though, let's begin with a quick recap of what Farina does and what makes her so unique. Well, as I'm sure you know, Farina's kit is one that revolves around summoning hydro creatures that will deal genuinely good skill damage at the cost of your team's HP. They drain all four of your party members' HP at the same time, provided they are over 50% HP, converting that into more damage for your Farina skill. On top of that, her burst will buff all of your party members' damage by a pretty huge amount based on how much your HP is increasing and decreasing, just changing overall, inside of your Farina's burst. At top level 10, you can get up to 75% damage bonus with max fanfare stacks for a C0 Farina, and this damage bonus will be to every single party member, increasing your Farina's personal damage, but also your carry and supports and just anyone in your team. This is great because it's a buff that won't just apply to your active character, meaning that not just your on-field carry, but also any other forms of damage, teams that run multiple carries or multiple high damage supports will benefit greatly from these buffs, provided you can capitalize on these stacks by draining your character's HP and healing it back up. While Farina will naturally drain your HP, being able to heal it back up is something that you definitely have to play around, making healers all the more powerful. And so as I'm sure you know by now, healing becomes very important with Farina, which we'll touch on in this video, but just in general, being able to stack these fanfare points, fully healing your team and maximizing the damage bonus you're gaining makes Farina feel like the strong character that she really is, whereas if you ignore this, she can get less value. Generally speaking though, her damage bonus is genuinely really high and so is her personal damage. Because of this, while we will compare her to other Hydra options, generally if your team can run her and has enough healing, she will be a great option because of how much damage she gives you. With that in mind, she brings a lot of new things to the table. The first thing that I don't see people talking about nearly enough is how she can change how you build a lot of your characters. I touched on this briefly in my Farina guide, but to go into a bit more detail, since Farina drains your HP of all your party members through her skill when she's Usia aligned, this means that you can run characters on specific artifact sets and even different stats because of this HP drain. In fact, a lot of on-field main DPS characters, almost all of them, can benefit from running certain sets like Marie Chaussée Hunter, which is one of the strongest sets in terms of just raw stats that it gives you, an extremely versatile option provided you can make use of its effect. What this set will do is give you 15% normal and charge act damage and then up to 36% crit rate, basically for free provided your HP is changing while you're on field. This is super easy if you run your active character, your main DPS with Farina, and it therefore becomes one of two things, either the best in slot option on quite a few DPSs or just a strong alternative, a great versatile piece that you can run on virtually any main DPS, even if it's not their absolute best in slot, it's usually a strong contender, a viable option, especially if you have good substats on it, and it makes it a way more efficient domain to farm. In general, Marie Chaussée and Golden Troop are really efficient to farm just always. I want to make that clear, but especially if you have Farina, not only is Golden Troop great for her and many other characters, but now Marie Chaussée is just such a versatile set that you can use on literally almost any main DPS, with it being even potentially the best in slot if whatever DPS character you're using doesn't have a better option. This is because of how often and consistently your HP will be decreasing through Farina and also increasing thanks to a healer that she will require you to run alongside of her anyways. Now, if that wasn't enough, even a set like Vermilion Hereafter, which I have spent ungodly amounts of resin in, also becomes more viable because while it isn't as universal of an option as Marie Chaussée because it requires you to use your burst, Vermilion's four piece can give you up to 66% attack, which again is a great option for certain characters that use their burst and that will want this attack bonus. Because of this, having these two sets that you can now use on virtually any main DPS character, with obviously Marie Chaussée being the more recommended option, I want to make that clear, Vermilion is just if you have it like I do, and still slightly better on characters like Shao, but anyways, is one thing you really need to keep in mind with Freena, and it can actually make her change the way you're building your characters. Now, that's not enough. I said new sets, but I also said new stats, and this is true. A lot of your characters now actually have the option of going from an elemental damage bonus goblet to an attack, HP, defense, or whatever percent one based on what they scale off of. For a lot of attack scaling characters, for example, going for an elemental damage bonus goblet will typically be their best option. With that in mind, especially if they have a lot of damage percent sources in their team through support characters or even their own kit, then an attack percent goblet is usually not that far behind and 
only a little bit worse. This means that it can be a viable option if you have better substats of an attack goblet instead of whatever element your carry is. Now with Farina, since she gives you so much damage percent through her burst at max fanfare stacks, this makes it to where an attack percent goblet for those attack scaling characters or HP for HP scaling, defense for defense scaling becomes even more viable based on your substats and can make building your characters a lot easier. If you have a ton of damage percent buffs, then an attack goblet, for example, can be better. Whereas if you have a ton of attack buffs, which are usually more common with characters like Bennett or buffing artifact sets or weapons, then a damage goblet can still be better. Knowing this and knowing how you can build basically any character differently thanks to Freena is absolutely just, I want to say crucial, but I think it's just a huge upside. Like it means a lot of your characters are more versatile. You can use one artifact set on virtually any on-field DPS you're using, which can make farming easier, building your characters easier, and makes it just a lot more lenient in what sets you can use and also what stats you can be looking for on certain pieces like a goblet that's really hard to farm for. And so that's one of the reasons why I think Farina actually changes everything, not to say that cliche line, because I think it's usually cringe, but I think it applies here. But that also isn't everything. As I mentioned in my Farina video, she also makes healers a lot stronger. Now, for basically the first time in Genshin, since they released Corrosion with Rift Towns that drains all of your character's HP, and even that is usually not that big of a deal, having a strong healer is actually a really good option. There's a case now to maximize your healing instead of just maximizing your damage, because more healing means more damage through your Farina's fanfare points, giving more damage to all of your team. Generally, and this is really important to understand, you usually pick a healer based on what value they provide your team on top of just healing them. Bennett has widely been one of, if not the best support characters and healers overall, because he gives you enough healing to your active character, while also giving you an insane amount of attack percent, and also acting as a good pyro battery for characters like Shang Ling. Because of that, a character like Bennett would oftentimes be picked over a character that has more healing than him, even though Bennett can only heal one character at a time. The attack you're gaining is way more important than just a little bit of healing if you can dodge and just not take damage. With that in mind, having a character like Farina who actually forces you to want to heal all of your characters at the same time completely shifts the meta, or at least shifts what her best teams are, what characters you want to be using with her, and how you want to be building your healers. Even a AoE team healer like Jean would usually be ran on a full crit build just because you have enough healing even without focusing on her healing. You can dodge and just not take damage, and then your Jean can heal you enough just by pressing her burst. With Farina, that's not the case, however, because not only may you take damage from enemies randomly, but also you just need to use your burst every rotation. It's not just a panic button anymore. You're constantly draining your HP, constantly giving your team a bunch of damage, which means that in order to preserve this damage buff and to actually be efficient, you need to heal it back up. You need to heal back the 40 to 50% HP drain that your Farina does to every single character in your party every rotation on top of damage you may be taking. And so having team-wide healing is actually not just convenient, but also optimal for your damage. This can make a character like Bennett not even be the best healer in certain Farina teams, where not only will you sometimes not need the attack percent if you're running HP scaling characters like Farina herself, but also healing all of your characters will use up some of Bennett's uptime, having to swap through your characters playing in a more quick swappy style, as Bennett can only heal one character at a time. And so having a team-wide healer is very convenient and oftentimes the most recommended. Now, I wanted to point out an exception here where I've seen a lot of people actually manage to make a full healing Bennett still work in a Farina team where you can stack them on as much HP and healing bonus as possible, even sometimes choosing a healer artifact set like Maiden's Beloved to give him as much healing as possible, fully healing your active character with like one or two ticks of his burst, and then combining that with Farina's overheal passive effect to heal the other party members in your team. As you can see, I put my Bennett on a full healer build of two Varukasha, two Clam, because I have no Maidens, with almost 40k HP just to see if you could keep up with my Farina and actually generate stacks by healing enough and through Farina's passive. And to my surprise, he mostly did. I was running him with Shao, who granted will, yes, manipulate his own HP, which gives you stacks, but I actually managed to basically heal enough. I managed to full cap my fanfare stacks, albeit a bit late in the rotation. Obviously, it's not like the optimal form of healing for most teams. You'd want a team wide healer, but knowing that this is a viable option and one that I liked with Shao in particular, because Bennett gives so much attack for him, and it's more of a meme, it's more of a niche option. It's not one that I'm like recommending, but it's good to know that you actually can fully switch your build, go on one where you're stacking HP and actually trying to maximize healing for once to actually manage to heal enough for Farina. As I said, though, I usually recommend a team wide healer, an AoE healer, but the fact that Farina changes what healers are good and also how you're going to build your healers is a really big change that I like. Because of this, a lot of AoE healers just got way better with Farina on top of being built differently. First of all, this means characters like Jean, Baiju, Mika, Charlotte, or on fielders like Noel, Kokomi, Yao Yao, and other healers as well just got way stronger because they can provide you fast AoE healing that 
is just really appreciated in Farina teams. While in the past, again, to use the Jean example, you just built her full crit. Now building her attack with some healing bonus is oftentimes a really easy and strong solution to just permanently heal your team. Yeah, you lose out on a bit of your Jean's personal damage, but you more than make up for it by having the damage percent that your Farina will give all of your party members. Now, your builds are also going to change with Farina. It's not just healers being better, although yes, they did. A lot of characters got stronger just by being efficient healers, but also the way you build your healers by going for more healing is one thing. And additionally, certain weapons, certain team comps change as well. Pearl type Amber, for example, is great at giving your whole party a bit of extra healing. And while it's not enough to solo sustain your team, you can, for example, run two of them or run one with another less AOE and more single target healer. So a quote unquote worse healer for your team like Kuki, but with a prototype Amber on another party member can kind of make up for the lack of healing and be for the most part enough for Farina. It's still recommended to run an AOE healer, but things like this can help make up for it and make your team just more unique. Your healer selection for the first time in genuinely forever is no longer, okay, how much damage does my healer give me? But now it can actually be how much healing do I get? Do I need this AOE healing and who can provide me with that? Now you do need to understand though that changing a offensive option for a defensive one, for example, Nahida for Baiju in a team that otherwise wouldn't really need a lot of healing. For example, you just had Kuki, which would have been enough without Farina. And then now you're putting Baiju instead of Nahida will come with downsides as well. Yes, you will add Farina to that team and get a lot of damage that way, but you might lose out on a really strong offensive support like Nahida or even Kazuo if you're placing him with Jean, who would give you grouping, elemental damage bonus, and also just good damage, which does definitely have its downsides. While I would argue that you can use these strong supports in your second team, it's also important to know that for just whatever team you're running, Farina gives you a ton of value, but also comes at the cost of needing to build your team around her, making sure you have enough healing and can get all the value out of her kit to really make her shine and feel like a super strong option. If you have no good healers built, she can feel a bit weirder to use. Still a good option, but you're really gonna have to play around her and actually stack her fanfare or she won't feel nearly as powerful and won't give you as much value. And I see a lot of people comparing her to other Hydra options and I think it's great that Farina can be a really powerful unit that doesn't really power creep anyone. In a lot of teams, she can be an upgrade, but in others, she is just a side grade depending on what other Hydra options you have and how you're building your team. For example, as a solo Hydro, I would mostly recommend Synchro or Yalan over Freena for certain vape teams with, for example, Deluc or Hu Tao. Whereas generally, I would just recommend running a double Hydro team anyways, as Freena with Synchro or Yalan is just a great combination. I think in a lot of teams, Freena is an upgrade though, because of how much damage she gives you. Like we ran the numbers on the first day of her release, but for example, Yalan can have more motion values, more personal damage than a Freena, but Freena can not only give your team more damage buffs overall, as she'll buff every party member you have and not just your active active party member like Yolan will, but also can end up potentially even having more personal damage as well if you factor in all the fanfare stacks that she can get depending on the situation. Again, this is just one example and it's not to say one character is better than another as for example, with Farina, you need a good healer, whereas with Yolan or even Sing Cho, you won't need as much healing so it can change your team building. But generally, like Farina's teams are just really strong and very unique, changes the way you build them, changes the way you play without being just a broken power creep option, just a really strong and oftentimes an up grade or at worst a side grade, but one where you have to build your team accordingly. In that way, she isn't necessarily for everyone. You might not have a good healer or might not want to play one. And I also think it's important to emphasize that there's so many strong Hydra options right now that a lot of the times there's just so much to choose from. She also influences the meta in the sense that she's a unique form of Hydra application that doesn't need normal attacks like Yolan or Sing Cho will and can be applied from off field, synergizing well with characters that don't even need to normal attack, which can help for quick swappy teams, potentially future characters, or even someone like Dea, who's whose burst hits don't count as normal attacks, even though she's punching. Farina has a very unique kit and one that I think is very strong, genuinely, in a way that I think changes or at least is an addition to the meta in a very unique and impactful way. With that in mind, Farina can actually completely change certain team archetypes or at least change how you're building them, what characters you're putting in and how the team performs. For example, Farina having slower Hydro application than fast Hydros like Sing Cho or Yalan make it to where in a lot of teams she'll want to be ran in a double hydro core. With that said, as a solo hydro, she can enable reactions like quick bloom, where you'd be getting more quicken and less hyper bloom, which would, yes, come at the cost of getting less hyper blooms, but in return, you'll get more quicken uptime, more spread or aggravate on your dendro or electro carries, respectively, which can give them more personal damage on top of your Farina's buffs. Slower hydro application isn't always a disadvantage for teams like that, where Farina can actually be a great option. Examples of this include Sino teams and Al Hytham teams, where having a bit of a slower hydro option actually works out a lot of times where yeah there's a viable 
replacement, but you can actually play a very strong quick bloom team with both of these characters and a ton of alternatives as well, and actually get a lot of value from her hydro application and damage bonuses. Now, while in my Farina guide, I give you guys a breakdown on Farina's best teams, I want to in this video instead talk about the teams that she particularly changed the playstyle and builds of, and also some popular ones out right now, as it's quite a hot topic. I first of all want to say that I think she greatly buffed Noelle teams. She made her arguably even a better option than Ito in teams with Farina, as she will constantly heal your entire team, and especially with C6, will also deal pretty good damage, being paired in a Geo team with Farina as your Hydro option, just allowing you to crystallize a little bit, because why not, while also giving you a lot of damage to everyone in your party and having good personal damage as well. Farina also works very well with characters that can manipulate their own HP, making some Nevelette teams where he runs double Hydro, can stack his passive twice or three times with a C1, and run really powerful supportive options. While initially I recommended a healer with Nevelette teams with Farina to heal all of your party members back up, oftentimes you actually can max your fanfare stacks through Nevelette's HP manipulation alone. Now, having Prototype Amber can help, but through my testing, it isn't even needed, as he's a character who can heal himself up and drain his HP back down himself on top of your Freena's drain as well. Having a healer in this team can definitely be comfy though, and a strong option as well. Other characters include Rizli, who manipulates his own HP as well, and even someone like Shao, if you are running a Nemo characters alongside of him. A team like this, especially with C4 Gene, can be quite powerful, but even without it, it can work pretty decently. Just note that you're replacing Bennett, who's really strong for Shao in general. Farina also works really well with Wander in a team like this one, which I've already covered in my guide, but I want to re-emphasize, and allows your on-field character, Wander in this case, but pretty much whoever you're running, to have the option to run Marie Chaussée just all the time, which is great. In my opinion, she also makes Mono Hydro teams way more viable, as a lot of times I would just run an Electro character here so you could double swirl Electro and Hydro, and it would be more enjoyable and generally stronger. With Farina, you actually have a case to run a bunch of Hydro characters with her, buff all of their damage, and it works really well. Obviously, you can still go Taser here, still go pretty much anything, as Farina's teams are everything. You can run her in literally any Hydro archetype, but this is a team that I think got a lot better with Farina. Farina can also be ran in many Freeze teams, and also is particularly strong with double carries, two characters that deal a lot of damage, as she will constantly buff both of them. An example is running Raiden and Eula in the same team. I said them in the wrong order there, ignore me. But Eula and Raiden, both being very powerful carries and ran oftentimes together if you have both, well, Farina can also be slapped onto this team and buff all of their damage on top of having good personal damage as well. Farina changing how you build teams by not only being used in like literally any Hydro reaction or any team where you can fit her basically, but by basically changing your team building process to go, okay, well, I'm playing Farina, so what's going to be my healer? Looking at your healers, picking the strongest option you have or whichever one makes the most sense in your team, providing your healer fits whatever element you're going for, gives you some utility either offensively or defensively, while also being able to heal your entire team, or if they can't, then being paired with another healer to help out on top of whatever DPS or other characters you want to run with your Freena. It's no longer just, okay, well, if I don't have a good healer, I'll dodge, or I don't need the most healing. It's actually a top priority to get a good healer if you plan on running Farina in your team and want all the value that Farina can give you. She gives you a ton of offensive capabilities, good damage, hydro application, and buffs, but comes at the cost of actually having to run a good healer, changing the way you build your team, and also build certain characters. And I also wanted to clarify somewhere in this video that Farina is more of an addition to the meta, a really strong character that has her own set of like teams and also ways you need to adjust your builds and do a lot of things to actually get a lot of value out of her, which doesn't make her niche. I've seen a lot of bad takes around saying she's niche, where in reality, her damage buff is really good universally. Her own damage is good and she can fit basically any Hydro team. You just have to play around her by running your team with a healer. I've mentioned this throughout this video. I don't want to repeat myself, but I want to clarify that one, Farina is really good, not just a niche option. And two, because of how good she is and because of her unique team building, this creates a very versatile character that actually can shake up the meta when you're looking at the strongest teams, especially if you are someone who pulled for Farina. And as the quote unquote Hydro Archon, I think she does a good job at being a unit that completely changes how you play the game, build your characters. And I did this video as sort of a PSA as well to say, hey, you might actually want to be building your characters or teams differently if you're playing Farina, which I think is a really, really good thing. And so I hope this video was helpful. I was traveling for a bit recently, so I'm sorry if this was delayed. I wanted to get this video out like literally 10 days ago, but I had more time to play her and see how people, you know, reacted to her. And overall, I think there's a lot of things you should know about Farina, how she changes a lot of things. And she's a character that I personally really, really like and I'm very happy with. I hope you guys feel the same way. And if not, or if you do, do let me know in the comments. I'll be reading most of them. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.